Hey everyone, and today we're looking at uh, a common document needed to be able to implement analytics data, and that's a tracking plan. Now, it doesn't really matter if you're doing it on Mixpanel or Amplitude or Google Analytics, or if you're just building an actual uh, just raw data structure, or something like Amazon Redshift or BigQuery, you're likely going to want to think through your event tracking and what events you want to send, what properties you want to collect, and so on. And I find it's, it's the best way to do this is just in a simple, plain old Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheets, which would be my preference. Um, and that just lets you think through it. So before you ask them to start writing code, we can do a quick plan and out document. So I got in front of me uh, uh, the template that I use uh, for my clients. And also I'll show you the template that other companies provide you with. So I'll have the template from segment.com and Mixpanel has a template. And I've seen the template from Amplitude as well. They're all almost the same. Uh, and you're going to see the same structure over and over again. But let's walk you through it. Let's walk you through some of those, those basic columns and rows that you should keep in mind. So when we open here, you know, right away, um, when I create a document like this, I'll, I'll go through the app, you know, whether it's a web app or a mobile app, and I tend to split the, the document into sections, or I tend to split the app into sections. So I might have, you know, the sign up portion, and then I'll have the, say, the onboarding portion, and then I'll have maybe some of those core critical product things I can do. And then I'll have maybe some of the revenue portion or some of the revenue events like upgrading their plan and so on and so on and so on. So I'll just divide into, into logical sections and it really depends on the app, but you could probably get a sense of what those sections are. This is just for organization. It doesn't matter if you have too many sections or too little sections, just some sections. Then we get into, into the bulk of it, right? So really we want to look at first events. So an events have two things usually. Event names and event properties. So the event name is, is, is what you'd be looking at when you look inside the tool like Mixpanel and you want to say, hey, um, how many times the user did this? That usually means how many times has this event been fired over that time period, right? So event names should be logical. That's the, the best description for it. I've seen very cryptic, obscure event names that no one knew what they were. Um, they shouldn't be, let's say, development functions, right? Of course, in your code, you might have a function for sign up, which might look something like sign up, uh, completed function, something like that, right? It probably shouldn't be that. Um, it should just be sign up completed, right? That was the action that users took. When you when you write them, you tend to have a choice to write them in the past, in the present, or in the future. Um, again, not a not a big preference either way. But what you can do is simply choose one. So you might say, hey, I'm going to use the past tense for this and and i'm gonna keep them like that so so i think this is all past tense and i completed it the other thing you should consider here is using the same naming convention so this right now this is all title case right but you can also do lowercase right or you could do uh maybe camel case so again which one you choose doesn't really matter but you stick with one you choose one you stick with that from my experience, lowercase seems to be quite popular and seems to be easier to maintain. And for developers, they can sort of just force everything to be lowercase. Uh, so it makes it easier to, to keep in standard. So that's one option. And uh, another thing I've also seen that's also handy is it's maybe adding um, a sort of a prefix for category of events. So this is commonly seen, let's say, onboarding, right? So we might, you know, we might say, hey, we have... Um, six or seven events during onboarding, and we want to know that they are in the onboarding. So we're going to do onboarding, first step. And then we're going to do onboarding, second step, right? Onboarding, third step, right? So so that, so that when you look at them in, in the interface or whatever you're using to query these events, they're sort of easier to find. And you can say, oh yeah, here's the onboarding events because they have the prefix. So other common prefixes are things like checkout, uh, where you have a category of events organized around that. So that's, that seems to be handy. So those are just general tips. Then lastly, you know, we move into the properties. So properties is anything related to the event that we want to track. So usually we're looking at relevant things. So, you know, here for the sign up, maybe users can sign up by email, Facebook, and let's say Google Plus here. So, we, you know, we got a property that we just call it authentication type, Facebook, email, Google Plus, right? So they have one of these values. And you'll find that the properties is really where the magic happens. So as, as you get deeper in your product and you kind of start covering some of those core product events, you, you know, you'll find yourself doing five, 10, maybe 15 different properties, maybe even more. 
because you're collecting all the other information. Um, and what properties lets you do is it lets you create more condensed, reusable global events. So a common example is maybe, you know, users can upload pictures to your server. So, you know, oh, a video session. So it might be able to upload, I don't know, a YouTube video. Then it might be able to also upload from Vimeo. And it might be able to upload like an MP4, something like that, right? So let's do that. So, you know, upload an MP4. But instead of doing three kind of major events or three different events, we can just sort of do one event to upload video. And now that we have one event, we can have a, a property here just called video type, right? And maybe here we'll do something like YouTube or Vimeo or MP4, something. So now we condense three events into one global event. It's always a good idea to condense events. One, because it's easier. So if you want to, let's say, do a breakdown of the, say, the most popular types of videos being uploaded, it's easier to have one event and then break it down by property than to load three events together, just, just simplicity-wise, even if you do something like SQL. And uh, a lot of analytics tools, they tend to charge you by event, not by property. So it's a, a cost incentive to do that too. So, so that's one thing. The, the other thing about properties to keep in mind is to be consistent in how you use them. So a common example here is we might have uh, maybe an event when the user logs in, right? And when they log in, they can also log in via Facebook, email, or Google+. So instead of having a, a whole different property, something like oh, authentication or like oh, account type, right? And you have Facebook, email, and Google+. Still doing that, let's just use the exact same thing, right? And the benefit here is then as people get familiar with the data, they'll learn to recognize that. So see, oh yeah, authentication type. I saw that at the signup event, it probably works in the same way here, right? And this is something you'll see, you'll see across your product where you have properties that are very similar, almost identical. They might mean the same thing. So you can just rename them slightly, maybe make them a little bit more, a little less specific, just so you can reuse them in different places. So that's the event. A helpful column that you don't want to skip is the, the logic of when it fires. And this column is helpful for developers. So when they take the plan, and this plan is really meant for developers, right? It's meant to be help them implement the data quickly. You don't want to assume that they know what you mean when you mean sign up completed or whatever event. So just be very specific in the logic. This event fires when the user clicks the download PDF button on the homepage. That's very specific, right? There's not a lot of room for ambiguity or, or confusion there. So that's really helpful. Then lastly, we have a column F. Uh, in this case, we call it traits because this is for segment, but this is really user attributes, mixed panel call set, uh, people properties. And this is just the attributes of users you want to collect. So a lot of cases, attributes here will be things like name, email, city, country. And then in every product, you have very product specific attributes. So maybe the plan they're in, like the uh, membership plan, maybe how much you're paying, is it per month, is it per, is it per year? Then we can look at things authentication type, right? So we can store that. How do they authenticate? By Facebook, by email, Google Plus. Uh, other types of traits here or user attributes might be how many times people did things. So a lot of times we might say, okay, they uploaded videos. How many videos have they uploaded in total? Just so we have a sort of running tally of that and we can break it down by that. So you want to just set those here and this are just sort of like properties. Um, so we have, you know, you'll see they have the very almost the same structure of, of a property. So as you go through, you, you just want to sort of think about, okay, you know, what, what user attributes am I interested in looking at? If I were to open the profile of a user of one of my best customers, what would I want to see at a glance, right? What things would be interesting to me? And this is where things like, oh, you'd be interested to see what city they're from, what country they're from, how they authenticate it, uh, maybe how many times they've done this, how many times they've done that, or what is their plan? So that's, that's where this comes from. So this, this plan, uh, there's a couple of tabs here. Uh, we'll skip the super property tab since that's relevant, that's very specific to Mixpanel. Uh, and the notes tab, I just need to put a little uh, sort of guidance of what the plan is. So I, I like to use pipes to denominate ORs. So email or Facebook or SMS. Uh, commas to denominate lists. So a lot of analytics tools support the idea of a list. So having multiple items. So you can imagine something like, um, you have an event called add to cart and your cart has multiple items. So you might set a property with a, a list of values for those items in the cart. 
numbers or integers or praise or forward, everything else tend to be strings. Uh, for currency, most analytics tools do not want to see the currency symbol in there, whether it's a dollar sign or a euro sign, doesn't matter. Uh, so you then just put the actual, uh, you have to put that as a number. And I like to provide the documentation docs for whatever we're implementing. You can see this plan is sort of geared towards segment.com, but you might see, you know, a mixed panel link here or a Google Analytics link or whatever we're doing. So that's my plan. Um, let's take a look at a couple of other plans. So here's the one that segment.com provides on the website. You can see they have a little, they show you this little snippet, the JavaScript snippet. Then they break it up into the different functions. So segment has a function called page, which is what helps you track page views, basically. So this might uh, be a, you know, maybe you want to just track of specific pages and they sort of help you build the, the function here, the code that developers can implement. Um, and this is in JavaScript. And they have a little guidance here and it's ready to install, it's a test it, so on. So that's one thing. Their events tab is, is similar to what we have. So, you know, here's our event name. Uh, the why, this is more of a, of a business uh, column. Then we have properties. These are event properties. And then they separate that into columns. So properties and property values. Uh, the location is uh, location is kind of similar to probably the fire one. So, you know, this fire is at the center page. This fire is here. I find, it, I find it helpful to have an actual description of when something should fire, just because it might be able to fire multiple, in multiple ways in that page. But that's what this is doing here. And like before, we have a code here and then the, our little track in here for ready and install. And I do think, what I do like at this plan is actually they have faces. So here's phase one, here's phase two, and phase three. This is something that I found quite helpful. Um, and what I tend to do is I use priorities. So I might, you know, when I create a plan, I might create a plan full of, I don't know, 50, 60 events for, you know, for a complete web app or a complete mobile app. But we don't, we don't really want to implement 50 or 60 events. So what we do is, or well, what I do is I just put priorities to it. So here's all the priority one events, and that might be 10 events that we really need to do. And here's all the priority two events, another like 10 or 20, and so on. So that's helpful. So back here. And I think that's something here. Yeah, so we have the client-side events. So you know, so if you, do, you might be doing this with JavaScript. And then they have a section for server side uh, that you want to break apart uh, into uh, so on. And you have the same faces. And here's our notes on, you know, tracking things and so on. For client side versus server side, what I have done is I sometimes will add a column here to just label it. Is this client side, is this server side? You know, is this going to be done through JavaScript, maybe through iOS, maybe through Android, or maybe it's going to be done through a server. So that, that can be another way to replicate. Then they, uh, their traits, their user attributes, they put them in this tab, in the identify uh, calls. And what they do is they provide something for the client, something for the server, some rules there. And then on the, on the, and this is the user attributes. So they just list them. They list all the ones they want to track. And then if they want to do it on the client side or on the server side. So, but again, the developer will have to figure out you know, is this, is the server thing supposed to happen like once a day, when they log in, when they log out. So that's still a little bit of logic that we need to be entered here to figure out when something needs to be done. And then lastly, they have a, a group call, which is uh, relevant for tools like Intercom that lets you organize users under organizations or groups. So same idea. So that's that, that's segment. Now here's the mixed panel plan. And this is geared towards SaaS companies, but the structure is what we're looking at here. So we have uh, a trigger. This is kind of like our fire when, right? User views a page, user views the blog, user requests a demo. Then they have the event name. Then they have properties. Here is the different properties. And here is a property type. And they have uh, super properties, which is uh, something specific to Mixpanel. Again, property type. And then people properties, which, which is their user attributes concept. Same thing. What they don't have here is they don't have values for the properties, which um, I find the values do help provide a little context of what the property is. Business insights, this is cool, right? So again, we, we, we're trying to tie it into some kind of business goals and into metric category and reference client. I'm actually not sure what reference client is. So, so we could keep it going down. You know, we have a, a complete list of things. So, and, and again, again, another way to structure uh, your, your tracking plan. 
So you have options. You can even build your own. You can do something else. I've done, I've seen people do diagrams of their analytics data, but the same idea is still, is still there. We're going to have events. We're going to have event properties. We're going to have user attributes. We need a logic. I want to fire them. And not to forget that these documents are usually for developers. So they need to be as clear as straightforward as possible. So they can just grab it, grab the documentation and implement. And that's all for today. Let me know if you have any questions.